This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this tutorial we're going to be covering how to create a map in a 2.5D environment. We're going to create some lines that animate on the map, we're going to have some indicators showing the start and end of those lines, which will be trails, and uh, that'll be about it. We'll move the camera around, we'll move the map around, and it's going to be pretty great. So without further ado, let's uh, get into After Effects and start this journey towards more map puns. Okay, so here in After Effects, the first thing you want to do is grab a image of a map. And uh, I've gone ahead and just taken a screenshot of Google Maps, and this is downtown Ottawa. So go ahead and get whatever map you need to do this, and uh, we'll give this a go. So the first thing I do is I draw the lines on the map that I need. So I'm going to do that by taking the map, dragging it onto a new comp here, to create a composition with the map in it, and then I'm simply going to take the pen tool here and I'm going to draw some lines on here. So making sure you have no layers selected and I'm going to pick somewhere near the center of the map to start drawing these. You will have wanted to, of course, center your map on something you're interested in. And I'm just going to draw points out on the map, not paying much attention to this one-way street at all and uh, drawing the line around. So I've gone ahead and I've created this line, which it has filled for me, which I didn't really want. I want it to have a fill of none. So you select this none, okay? And I would like it to have a stroke that is a solid color. And that solid color can be blue or red or whatever you'd like, and its thickness can be 10 or none or whatever. So we've got this line on the map, good. And that's really all we needed from this comp. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down shift select both of these, copy them, and then we're going to create a new composition, name it Animated Map, if you'd like, and then what we're going to do is make sure that our comp settings in here are uh, something we recognize, and that would be something like the HDTV 1080 25 or 24 or something like that, so go ahead and hit OK so we can resize this down, and now we're going to paste those things in here, make them both 3D layers, perfect, and uh, create the rest of the things we need for this scene. The first thing is going to be a camera. I'm going to be using a 24 millimeter preset camera, and we're going to need uh, some lights. So I'm going to create an ambient light just to ambiently light the entire scene. Perfectly good. And create another one, a new light, and uh, this one is going to be a point light. Okay, that's good and it is not going to be as intense, maybe like at a 50% intensity, and you duplicate that and make another one of those. And to these things, I'm going to take the map here, and I'm just going to change its material options to have, uh, just have its specular intensity be zero, its shininess zero, and its metal to be zero. I don't really want that kind of shininess going on. And same thing with this shape layer. Not interested in any specular stuff going on, and the metal can be zero as well. Okay, good. Perfect. Now another thing I want to do with this shape is change its opacity to be down around 50%, so I can still see the lines under it and the labels. Perfect. That seems good. Now I'm going to take its position, I'm going to just parent it to the map layer so it's stuck to it, and then I'm going to offset it here by about negative three so it's coming up off of the map. Okay, that's good. Now things are still a little bit bright, so what I want to do is take my lights and we're going to want to move them around and such, but uh, let's first go ahead and reorient this map here to be uh, more to our liking as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it uh, closer to the camera, like so, and now I'm going to change its rotation to be uh, sort of a little bit flatter like this, and not so flat that we end up seeing some of the gross, disgusting parts that we are not interested in looking at, uh, namely, you know, the banner up at the top and things like that. And we're just gonna make sure that we're also changing the position so that it works out for us, bringing it closer to the camera. So in this instance, we're not actually moving the camera around, rather we're going to be moving the map around instead. So there we go, get it positioned close to the center of the frame here. Perfect, 
Now, if you find that your streets and the like start to look a little bit funny, that is likely because adaptive resolution is just blurring them out because it doesn't care too much. So we're going to need to create a rectangle to make some labels. So it's going to have a fill, a full fill, and it's going to have no stroke on it. Okay, good. Now we're going to need to go into this rectangle here, change its size to be something like uh, 250 by 50. Nice tiny little rectangle like this. It's going to be 3D as well, and we're going to parent it to in the map here. And we'll just change its position to be such that it is uh, stuck on the map here. So set its uh, Z position to none, make sure that it's on the map. And uh, we'd like its rotation here to be 0, 0, 0, so that it's definitely on the map. And we're going to need to position it in the correct spot, at least somewhere we can work on it for now. And we're going to add to this, we're going to add to it a poly star. All right, so let's just go into the contents here. We've got the rectangle path, we we'll drag the poly star path in there, so it's getting the stroke and the fill as well. And we're going to change it from being a star to a polygon. The number of points is going to be three. And now we're going to change things like its rotation to be 180. Sorry, 180. And then we're going to make its radius uh, smaller, smaller, smaller. Something like 10 would be appropriate. Change its position over and down to be sticking out of this thing, like so. Now we're going to change the anchor point of this entire thing, such that the anchor point is on the tip of that arrow, or as close to it as you are comfortable. Okay, that looks good. That uh, I'll probably do for our purposes here. Now, this layer, we are going to say layer, transform, auto orient, and we would like it to orient towards the camera. Hit OK. Now what this does is it causes this layer to always face the camera. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change its position so that we can move it. Remember, its position is relative to the map, so we're moving it to be at the intersection we would like. And it's going to be constantly oriented towards the camera, so the label is always going to be visible. So, if we start changing the map of the camera, it'll always point towards the camera. Now, let's create a new text object, and this will say starting. So this is where we are starting from. I don't care if it's bad grammar, I mean, I don't really make maps for a living. Uh, I just take the text the clients give me and put it on maps. So, parent the text to that shape layer of the sign like so, make sure it's above it. And now we look at the position and rotation of the text, and we're just gonna zero out all of these values. Good, and then we can just manually kind of drag it so it's in the right spot. Good, so starting, stuck on there, perfect. I like how that looks. Okay, good, so the sign, hit AA and make sure that it is Indeed, casting shadows. That'll be important because we want it to cast shadows on the map. We have one sign here as the start, and we'd like another one as the end. So let's take those, uh, duplicate them, change it from saying starting to something like uh, ending, ending, ending. Good. And now we'll take sign two here, and we'll alter its position to just move it over to wherever the end is going to be, making sure that that point comes to rest on the point we want. And you can see we're already encountering one of the many problems that comes from auto-orienting things, which is it starts to bend at weird angles. But this is one of the problems that you'll have to solve. So you'll take this, and what you'll do is we would just like it to jut out the other side. So instead we'll alter the scaling here to be a negative 100, which will flip it like so. And then we'll take the ending here, change its rotation to be 180 degrees on that axis, and uh, there we go. So now it's poking in the correct direction at least. Now we can move the map here. Just move it up, down, over a little bit to get those framed a little bit better. And there we go. So we've got those framed up quite nicely. Never mind this poking through up there. It's not too important to our purposes at this moment. So. We've got the ending, we've got the starting. Things are looking pretty good. Other things to fix up are, of course, having this blue line poke through, which we do not want. And uh, we can get rid of that by just taking sign two, its position, 
and moving it up a bit. And you'll want to do that to uh, sign one as well. It's just bumping its position up so that it hovers a bit above the map. Okay, perfect. So this is all looking quite well and good. Now, as for animating these things, we would like the signs to uh, scale. So we'll deal with their scale here. Make sure you set keyframes for their desired end state here at frame 20. And the desired start state is going to be uh, zero across the board for all those. So they scale up from zero. Okay, that looks good. Take those keyframes, easy ease them, go to their graphs, and then uh, pull their handles. So they come up like so, that seems good. Now the journey here, we're gonna start at two seconds and that's where the start is going to start for us. So the start is gonna come on and then we would like the line to animate. So we're gonna start the line there and we're going to add a trim path. And what the trim path does is it trims the path from say 100% uh, to 0%, meaning the end is at zero and the start is at zero. Start a keyframe there. Go ahead, bunch of keyframes. Now I'll set the ending to be at 100%, meaning it's animating from zero all the way along to 100%. Good, and at that point we would like the ending to pop up. Bweep, just like that. Cool. So if we would like to say animate some rotation into our map here as it's going along, we could put the position and rotation keyframes in here of the uh, position and orientation if we so desired. So we would like it to start at a certain orientation and end at another one. So this looks like a good ending orientation. Let's set the start orientation to be more aligned with where the start is. So we can do things like uh, start rotating it around a bit on a couple of axes, perhaps. Uh, da, da, da. And then we can move its position around on a few Maybe zoom in a bit on it. So as we're going, our starting comes up, and then the line starts to move, and there's the ending that comes up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Take those and easy ease them. Now you've got movement and going on here. Everything looks good, perfect. Um, now what we would also like to do is note that these things are constantly angling themselves towards the camera, which improves readability quite a bit. Okay, so we're almost done. The last thing to do is to get the shadows and lighting in there. So we made a lot of lights. The first one was an ambient light. And the point of the ambient light is just to put a lot of light into the scene. It just lights everything evenly. Now one of these lights, we wanna stick that to the camera. And then we wanna change its position here to be right at where the camera is. So it'll always follow the camera around. Now the other light, we would like it to be parented to the map so that it's stuck on where the map is. Now call up its position, hit zero for all of that, and that sticks it all the way over here. Now we're gonna use the position here to make it a little bit more front and center for us, sort of around here. And we wanna float it up a little bit so that it's, it's hanging out above the scene a little bit and we can use it hopefully here if we've played our cards right to uh, cast some shadows for us so we're going to negative negative a thousand maybe so it's up a little bit higher good we can see it's casting those shadows and what we're just going to do is we're going to take the lights and we're going to try to balance them out a little bit so maybe downplay the intensity of some of these you know downplay the intensity of this one a little bit and just try to balance out your lighting so you can see shadows a bit clearer and all that good stuff. So, see how that's looking? It's casting shadows that are moving and we get to just really enjoy all of that. 
But all in, this should have given you the tools you need to create one of these for yourself. Just be mindful of such things as this kind of tear up here. Just make sure that the starting and ending pictures you're working with are of good quality, which is great, and that you are aware of where they are. If you're making these assets in Illustrator or whatever, then you probably won't have these problems. But if like me, you're lazy and you just take pictures from Google Maps, then uh, you'll probably have these problems and you'll need to get over them somehow. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. Hopefully this has helped you make some maps. You can show all kinds of interesting journeys like yours from not being able to make these to being able to make them, which is not a movement of place, so I don't know how you would map it. Stop by premiumbeat.com for all of your royalty-free music and sound effects needs, and stop by the blog for more tips, tricks, and tutorials in After Effects and other applications. And again, I'm Evan Abrams. Uh, you can check out my work on my YouTube channel or tweet at me at ECAbrams or head over to EvanAbrams.com and uh, just enjoy some stuff there. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.